Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Michael Corgett. I am one of the retirement focused advisors here at the Retirement Group. Today we're going to talk about retiring on purpose with purpose. These on-demand webinars are just one of the many resources that we have to offer individuals. We work with a number of individuals at several Fortune 500 companies and these webinars are just one of the many resources we have. You can reach out and get our retirement guide for your company specific program. Um, we maintain an ebooks library filled with books on all sorts of different subjects. We do keep a library of all the webinars on both our website, theretirementgroup.com, as well as our YouTube page. Uh, we maintain our own newsletter and a blog. So again, just reach out for, uh, to our office and we'd be happy to get you the information that you uh, would like. And then probably our most important uh, service or resource that we offer is our retirement cash flow analysis or what we like to call our retire kit. It's a comprehensive snapshot of your current situation and what your retirement could look like, whether it's a month from now, a year from now, five years or 10 years from now. When you start planning, the sooner you start planning, the better off you're gonna be in retirement. I promise you that. So consider taking advantage of the complimentary service and you know again reach out to our office we'd be happy to put together one of these cash flow analyses for you why do you want to consider the retirement group well like myself I'm part of a team of advisors with a lot of experience we have offices nationwide we've been working with these companies in some cases for up to 30 years we've got a very good knowledge of your savings plan your pension your health care benefits, your benefits in general. And I already mentioned it, but I'll say it again. Take advantage of our complimentary cash flow analysis. Do me a favor, scan this QR code. Uh, that will take you to our LinkedIn page. You can follow us on LinkedIn. You can see when future webinars are going to be coming out for your employer specific or these in general. Uh, so definitely, definitely do that. So let's go ahead and dive into the presentation. These five factors are probably the most important things you need to consider, and that's why we call it our retirement planning checklist. Now, the hardest part is for you to be comfortable and emotionally ready to retire. And planning will allow you and help you to feel more comfortable and emotionally ready to retire, but you're the one who has to get your arms around all of that. We certainly can help make you feel better about it, with planning and developing relationship and an, uh, with an advisor like myself or one of my colleagues here at the retirement group. But all these others uh, we could talk about as well. Decreasing your risk or your volatility, that's you know your investments, your pension, your 401k, your outside investments, IRAs, Roth IRAs. We manage money for a living and we're an independent advisory firm. We work with Charles Schwab so we have an infinite universe of investment ideas, products, and uh, uh, products that uh, we can introduce you to to help you to create a successful, comfortable overall investment portfolio, which will also allow you to maximize your retirement income while hopefully minimizing your tax liability. When I work with a client, we are always working, talking year after year about what's the best thing to do, where's the best sources to take income this year for my retirement versus, okay, next year, hey, is there going to be an RMD coming up for me, required minimum distribution? I don't want to overpay in taxes. Again, this is developing and working with an, an advisor and helping that, letting that advisor help to invest uh, set up an investment philosophy for you will become and help you to be a lot more successful in retirement. So let's understand some of the key changes in retirement planning. First, do you understand your pension plan? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about it here momentarily. The impact that real estate has on retirement plans, and this has become a much bigger deal over the last few years just because of the skyrocketing value of our homes and any other real estate that we might own. 
May, are you keeping and looking at inflation? Well, inflation has certainly been a big deal the last couple of years. And while we watch the Fed raise interest rates to try and bring inflation under control, uh, it has been definitely something to consider when you look at how do I invest? What sort of income am I going to need in my retirement? Are my investments taking advantage of, of growth where I'm going to be able to keep pace with inflation? And I'll talk about that here in a minute. And then bottom line, avoiding mistakes and working with an investment team. Let's first talk about the traditional sources of funds for retirement. Social Security, for the most part, all of us can count on Social Security in retirement. Matter of when do you take your Social Security? Do I need to take it early? Or can I afford to wait until I get to full retirement age? Which for most of us is between the ages of 66 and 67. Can I afford to wait till I'm full max Social Security at age 70? Or do I need to take it early just because I retired early and I need to start taking those extra dollars. Um, it's one of, the, one of the primary sources, but it's not the only source of retirement income. Pension, for the most part, all of you have pensions. Uh, for the most part, most uh, all of them pay out some sort of monthly income, but in some cases, like at AT&T, Exxon, and Boeing, there are opportunities to take your retirement in the form of a lump sum, roll it over into your own IRA, manage it accordingly and take an income from it again on what makes sense for you. 401ks and other outside investments. This I believe is one of the strongest legs in this retirement planning stool and I like to say what you do for yourself in retirement is going to make the difference between an average retirement and an exceptional one. Setting as much money as you possibly can aside living for today while also planning for tomorrow in your 401k and other investment vehicles like Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs, or just brokerage accounts or tax deferred investments. It really will make the difference. And then fourth and finally is the value of your real estate. There's many ways to access the value of your real estate during retirement. The traditional one I, I like to talk about is a reverse mortgage. That could make sense for you if you've got a lot of equity in your home and you want to stay in your home, but you want to take advantage of that equity, it can be a source of retirement income. And it's certainly something that we talk about with our clients and prospective clients as well. So change number one, understanding your pension. The big deal in most pension plans these days is the interest rates impact on potential lump sum values. Traditional monthly income benefits are earned, typically based on what you make at your company and the number of years of service that you put in will create a monthly income, traditionally a single life annuity, and everything branches off from that. Survivorship options where you take a lesser benefit for yourself to provide a benefit for your spouse, uh, those are options as well, uh, non-traditional sources like a 10 year period certain uh, to take, you know, if you're not married, but you want to make sure if you happen to die early in your retirement, uh, you could provide your children or other beneficiaries at least a benefit to them if you do happen to die early in retirement. But again, for many of you, you have the option to take a lump sum at, rather than the monthly pension. And that lump sum is significantly impacted by interest rates. And we, we've, we've seen that a lot over the last couple of years, a lot, definitely last year, and I'll touch on it here momentarily, but essentially uh, interest rates and the value of your lump sum are like on a teeter-totter. When interest rates go up, the potential value of your lump sum will go down. If interest rates are up 1%, the value of your lump sum pension can drop 8 to 12% on average depending on your age. And in many cases last year, we saw interest rates from last year of 2021 going into 2022 go up by as much as 3%. We were seeing lump sum, potential lump sum decreases from 2022 
2023 in the amount of 30 to 35 percent. It was extremely significant. Rates are up. Rates are going to stay up for a while. That's the Federal Reserve's intent to keep rates high for some time. That's there. There, that's what they use to control inflation, or at least to try and bring inflation down by slowing the economy down. That's raising interest rates will do that. So you have to keep in mind, hey, I'm in 2023, I'm still working. If I have a lump sum option, I may want to consider waiting a couple of years when interest rates will hopefully come back down from the higher levels, and then therefore my lump sum will go back up again. It's a cycle. Interest rates go up, interest rates go down. In 2020 and 2021, we were living with what I like to call crisis interest rates because of COVID. The Fed had dropped rates to near zero, so all short and long-term rates came down to very, very low levels. We are not in those times any longer. Things have changed. And unfortunately, if you didn't retire last year, you may wind up having to stick around if you want to take the lump sum benefit as your retirement. Let's talk about number two, the changes in the value of real estate. We've all seen the equity in our home increase, the value of our homes increase significantly. Home equity is at record levels and that equity can help do a lot of things for you. Now, the housing market is definitely much stronger and stabler today than it was back in 07 and 08 when we had the financial crisis. Um, the housing market is definitely still very tight. So you could still get top dollar and, and or top equity out of your home because there is still a more significant need for homes, Gen X and Gen Y buyers, uh, than there is a supply of homes. Home builders just aren't building them fast enough. And the replacement cost for, for homes has gone up significantly because of all the input costs. And then finally, interest rates. With interest rates higher, if you choose to sell a, a primary residence and rent or move on to a different location or, and or buy a second home, somewhere let's just say down where it's warmer, you can hold the paper and get a very nice rate of return on the value of that home, the equity in that home, by hanging on to the paper. You hold on to the mortgage. So these are things that you might want to consider that we didn't use to consider in the past because home values had pretty much stabilized. They weren't really going up a lot and interest rates were at near zero. Number three, inflation. Again, we've all seen inflation. It's definitely reared its ugly head. Inflation maxed out last year at 9.1%. Right now, I believe core inflation is in the neighborhood of five and a half to six percent. So, it's, so the Fed's raising of interest rates is definitely helping to slow down inflation to some degree. Um, they are limiting the money supply as well, so there's just not as much liquidity out there to create people buying just everything they can get their hands on, whether it's a new pickup truck, another home a vacation, new appliances for the house, house, you know, I just, you go to the grocery store, that's where I see the impact of inflation all the time. The gas pump, uh, any other, any retail store, these are just some examples, okay? One of the concerns that you have to have is that fixed income investments do very poorly in rising interest rate and rising price environments. Bond prices generally decline when interest rates go up and when uh, interest rates are high and, your, your invest, and inflation's even higher, your investments don't keep pace with inflation. Whereas a, a solid equity portfolio will allow you to, over time, see overall growth and performance in your equity investments and those will keep pace with inflation. So finally, just to summarize what we've talked about today, and just you need to avoid making mistakes. You need to understand where interest rates are and the impact it's gonna have on your pension and making sure you understand your health benefits. Healthcare costs in retirement are significant. I'm sure you're all well aware of that. 
Uh, when you were working, the cost might have been two or three hundred dollars a month. In retirement, it might be closer to a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month. So you have to plan for that. Are you working with an investment team? Well, we here at the retirement group are an investment team. I'm just one of the many individuals who shares ideas on idea uh, on investments and portfolio creation. We are a conservative investment team. You know, we believe in more value-oriented investments versus growth. We believe in slower and steadier growth versus the wild roller coaster rides that you could get in growth investments. Um, what value does that team add to you and your family? Well, outside of the fact that we get paid to manage money, we can offer a lot of value in a lot of other areas just because of our experience. And just to name a few, estate planning, insurance planning, and tax planning. We're all very knowledgeable in these areas, and these are things where we can help and share ideas and value to you and your family. And that's all part of what we make off of managing your money. Do, do you understand the fees that advisors charge? Well, obviously here I've been talking about managing money and mentioned it several times. Well, this is how we get paid. We charge fees on the assets that we actually add value to in our clients' portfolios. And hopefully those assets will grow over time. We do better when our clients do better. You've probably heard that before, but we do. And those fees allow us to provide you with a lot of, of uh, information, value, and knowledge on a number of other resources. And then finally, do, does your current investment advisor or financial advisor offer you a detailed financial plan and do they keep it up to date? They, they need to be updated, updated periodically. So make sure you've got a plan, have a plan and keep it up to date. Schedule a meeting with one of us and we would be happy to uh, do just that. Uh, those that don't have a plan are definitely going to be a little bit behind the eight ball. Uh, those who do have plans, especially plans that are at least five years into uh, a, a time frame where you you know you're you're not planning the day before you're going to retire, or you're not just getting a notification from your employer to say, "Hey, we no longer need your services. You're going to be let go in a month." And if you don't have a plan, you're like, "Oh my God, what am I going to do?" So take advantage of a written plan from us or any other advisor, and, and please keep that in mind. So. I really appreciate everyone's attention today. I hope that some of this information was helpful. Um, you could schedule a meeting by scanning this QR code here on the left with myself or one of my colleagues. And again, the one on the right will take you to our LinkedIn page. You could call our office to get your retirement guide specific to your employer at 1-800-900-5867 or send us an email at info at theretirementgroup.com. Now I want to check to see if, oh yeah, we definitely got a couple of questions that came in during the presentation. So let's get into the questions. Uh, just bear with me a minute here and I will get to them. Okay, question number one. I am a legacy employee at my company, which basically means they've been there a while, and they offer me a lump sum payment. Do interest rates affect me too? Well, in most cases, yes, interest rates do affect most lump sum pension payouts. I'll give you a simple example. At AT&T, we do a lot of work with AT&T employees. Lump sum calculations for last year at the previous year's interest rates versus 2023 are significantly lower this year than they were last year, and that's because rates jumped. And I showed that table earlier in the presentation. Now, that's in most cases, not all cases. In some cases, even at AT&T, interest rates don't affect lump sum values. But they do, in, in most cases, they do. They do at Boeing, they do at the oil companies, just to name a few. So yes, you need to understand the impact that interest rates could have on your lump sum and reach out to one of us. Let us work with you 
and go through running some estimates on your company site to make sure you understand that the imp what the impact interest rates are going to have on your potential lump sum. Okay, question number two. Can my pension be adjusted by my company to account for inflation? I have been with my company for 26 years and my lump sum option is grandfathered. Okay, we've got two questions here. The first is, is my pension indexed for inflation? Well, most private industry pensions do not have a cost of living built into it. Most governmental pensions do, but we don't do a lot of work with governmental entities. So to answer the first question is, in the most, for the most part, there is no inflation adjustment for a monthly pension uh, from your current plan, all right? And the other question is, yes, if your lump sum is grandfathered, the previous question sort of addressed the impact that, that interest rates are gonna have on that lump sum. Inflation doesn't really have much of an impact on a lump sum other than the way you invest it moving forward into your retirement. Okay, my coworker left in order to lock in lower rates. Can you explain why this makes sense for a grandfathered employee? Well, yes. <clears throat> if you have a pension with a lump sum option, lower interest rates are definitely gonna be, make larger lump sums. Your company basically has a bucket that has your name on it. And what you've earned goes into that bucket in the form of the net present value of a monthly stream of payments, a monthly pension. Well, that bucket of money earns an interest rate, and that interest rate is it impact on that lump sum, that bucket of money. The lower the rates, the more money that has to go into that bucket. The higher the rates, the less money. So higher rates, lower lump sums. I read an article about using my pension to buy an annuity rather than taking an annuity from my company. Can you tell me if this makes sense? It's a great question. We call this pension maximization. And I, I talked a little earlier about everyone's pension is gonna be based on a maximum single life annuity amount. But if you're married, you wanna take care of your spouse, there are joint and survivor options. Well, you could take a reduced benefit for yourself to, eventually, to potentially provide a benefit to your spouse. Those reductions can be up to 20 to 25% in your benefit to provide a benefit to your spouse. Well, that reduction could amount to $500 or $1,000 a month. Pension maximization is essentially an idea where you could take the single life annuity and take a portion of that amount to buy yourself and basically buy yourself your own insurance policy to self-insure on a tax-free basis a spousal benefit. You could potentially be better off in the long run and then if your spouse predeceases you, you could drop the insurance and then now you keep the entire monthly check that you could have been getting. So yes, it does make sense. It doesn't make sense for everyone it does make a lot more sense now than it did a year or two ago because interest rates were higher. Uh, here's another great question. I have heard that some employees at my company may not have a lump sum and only get an annuity. Why is this? Well, yes, that's true. And that is primarily because they are newer to the pension plan versus being more older, more tenured employees to your company. And in some cases, employers froze one plan and implemented a new plan and that new plan was only going to allow for a monthly check. So yes, this is the case for many employers that we talk to and work with. Uh, what tax differences are there for lump sums versus an annuity? Great question. Well, an annuity is going to be taxed as ordinary income at the federal and state level uh, when you take that annuity check. The lump sum is not taxable if you roll it over into an IRA and then only and only when you make withdrawals from that IRA is it subject to federal and potentially state income taxes. So an annuity is going to be taxable currently. A lump sum, if properly rolled into an IRA, will not be taxable. It will continue to grow tax deferred. 
and only will it be taxable when you choose to make withdrawals from the IRA. Okay, and here finally, I heard that RMD ages are changing. If I am 72, do I need to take a distribution this year or can I wait until next year? Well, a couple things I'll say. Secure Act 2.0 uh, has definitely is going to raise the RMD age above age 72. But right now, under the previous tax act, um, 72 is the age that you have to t start to take required minimum distributions from all of your IRA investments. Okay, the first year you have what we like to call a mulligan, so you can elect to defer your first distribution into next year. But keep in mind that you're also going to have to take a second distribution next year as well for that year. So essentially, if you take the mulligan and defer it in the next year, you're going to have to take two distributions in one year. So you've got to look at your current situation and, and the potential taxes that you might pay by taking two distributions in one tax year versus taking one this year and one next year. All of these are great questions and certainly if you speak with an advisor, we certainly can answer them and the specific ramifications and impacts it's going to have on your life. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and attention and I want you all to have a great day and stay safe. Thank you.